hide I don't waste dream no oh! Whoa, I'm sorry, sorry everybody, I'm sorry everybody, that hurt me too, that sounded so fucking crazy. Jennifer Lopez is a singer, dancer, and actress who rose to fame after her first leading role in the 1997 Selena biopic, where she lip-synced all of Selena's vocals. Jennifer received a Golden Globe nomination and became the first Latin actress to earn over $1 million for a film. Her musical career also began to take off as she released her debut Latin pop album on the 6th in June of 1999. The album, fueled by the success of her hit single, If You Had My Love, went platinum within two weeks. Jennifer's success comes from Selena's death and ripping off other artists. But did you know that Jennifer Lopez was secretly pulling a Millie Vanilli? Over the course of Jennifer's career, she has stolen the vocals of other artists and passed them off as if they were her own. Here's some of the songs stolen by J.Lo. After reaching superstardom from starring in the Selena biopic, J.Lo made her musical debut with the song If You Had My Love from her debut album on the 6th. The song was instantly a hit going number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and the album was heavily produced by her then boyfriend Puff Daddy. That song was written by Rodney Jerkins aka Dark Chow who's known for writing a lot of the top hits in the late 90s and early 2000s. But get this, Rodney had already written an almost identical song for Shantae Moore called If I Gave Love. Diddy heard Rodney's song for Shantae and asked him to rewrite something similar for Jennifer. Jenny's song also features vocals from an unknown singer. Technically, Diddy stole the song for J.Lo, but look, just stick around for the rest of the video and I'll tell you more. Her second single, Waiting For Tonight, was a cover of a dance pop group named Third Party. I have spent all of my life waiting for tonight. The song was presented to Jennifer, but she hated the song, saying that she never wanted to hear the song again. She eventually recorded her own version of the song and kept the backing vocals from the group's version. It's not out of the ordinary for artists to cover songs or use backup singers, but Jennifer started taking ghost singing too far. The third single, Feeling So Good, featuring Nas and Big Pun, features chorus vocals from an unknown singer. As the 2000s approached, Jennifer started becoming more of a sex symbol and became the it Latina girl on the scene as she released her second album titled J-Lo. The second single, Play, was co-written by a young Christina Milian at the time and Jennifer would keep her demo vocals on the final version. Ja Rule and Ashanti were frequent collaborators in the early 2000s, but after J.Lo's album sales started declining, Tommy Mottola went to Murder, Inc. to redefine her sound to make it more urban. That's when Irv Gotti started using Jennifer for collaborations with Ja. The Murder, Inc. remix for I'm Real was written by Ashanti, and her vocals from the reference track were also used in the song. Yeah, yeah. But I don't understand. My My love. For her and I also referenced I'm real for her and they left my background vocals on the record. And people they say, you know, are you the ghost voice for <laughs> you heard that? Yes, I heard that. <laughs> but um I mean I referenced the record for her, which is, you know, done a lot in the music industry, and they left my background vocals on there, so the song also faced backlash because of Jennifer's use of the N-word. Another artist that was ripped off was Mariah Carey. 
Irv Gotti admitted that Tommy Mottola was trying to sabotage his ex-wife Mariah's career. Can I give you the story of <laughs> I'm real? I'm real was so crazy, and I'm gonna throw Tommy under the bus a little bit. I don't give a about Tommy, so it's all good. It's all good. I'm talking about Tommy Mottola. Yeah, yeah, get out of here. And he calls me because he found out me and Rule made a record with Mariah Carey. Mm. And at the time, he hated Mariah Carey. So he was pumping Jennifer Lopez to compete. So he calls me 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, what's up, Tom? What the f you want? This, 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 oh. He says, Irv, I need you to do me a favor. I said, what's up? I need you to make a record with J-Lo, but I want you to put Ja Rule on it and make it a duet kind of a record. So immediately when he says that, I'm like, this yeah, yeah. He knows we just did this shit with Mariah, which right. was a duty record, and he's trying to Mariah. Then I went into the creative part. I said, look, man, I want total creative control. I don't want you telling me what to make. If I got to do a record with J-Lo, I want to do it however the I want to do it. He says, I don't give a what you do as long as it's a duet with Ja. Right. I said, cool. We literally made I'm Real in 10 minutes. Was it your idea to make her say the N-word on that track? Because remember when that happened. Who wrote like, it? This wasn't the first time Tommy Mottola messed with a song from Mariah to J-Lo's benefit. A sample Mariah intended on using for a song of her own was also acquired for the original version of Jennifer's I'm Real within a month of her request. Mariah Carey had found the 1978 Yellow Magic Orchestra Firecracker sample and recorded it on her soundtrack as Lover Boy. <laughs> I'm Real ripped off Mariah's plan for her song Lover Boy, so she replaced it with a sample from the cameo song Candy. Another glitter track called If We was a song where her and Ja Rule recorded a duet. The movie Glitter was a Sony Pictures release, which is a sister company of Sony Music, who was headed by Tommy Mottola. Tommy was viewing footage of Glitter while his ex-wife Mariah was shooting it. Tomorrow, when interviewer Vanessa Gregoriadis, who originally spoke with Mariah for Allure, told Carrie she'd recently interviewed Lopez, Carrie said, quote, I bet it was really intellectually stimulating. I bet you could just see the depth in her eyes. She was so soulful. You know, she just really didn't like Hearing Jennifer Lopez's name, it wasn't somebody she wanted to talk about. Mariah, who calls herself Supergirl, says she often sleeps just three hours a night. When told Lopez claimed to get eight, Mariah said, quote, if I had the luxury of not actually having to sing my own songs, I'd do that too. But certainly, she doesn't have a lot of respect for her as a singer. Gregoriadis says Mariah's attitude toward Lopez stems from her belief that part of the melody in Jennifer's hit, I'm Real, comes from Mariah's own song, Lover Boy. Though the music actually comes from a song recorded in the 70s, Mariah still thinks something's fishy. This didn't make any sense to her. How did a melody that she had locked down over the summer, last summer, suddenly appear on Jennifer Lopez's album? This was something that really bothered her. Mariah also aims her anger at ex-husband Tommy Mottola, head of Sony Music, for which Lopez records. She alleges that Lopez is so under his wing that he even groomed her to look like his ex-wife. She is so completely driven by the idea that she wants to remain on top without Tommy that, you know, that may have actually been her undoing. And oh yeah, the original version of I'm Real also features vocals from an unknown singer. The third single, Ain't It Funny, also remixed by Murder Inc, allowing her to cross over from pop to R&B. Ashanti wrote the verses and recorded the demo for Herb Gotti and Jennifer. Jennifer again pretended to be singing over Ashanti's vocals. And another single titled, I'm Gonna Be Alright, features vocals, you guessed it, 
that don't belong to her. Jennifer released her third album titled This Is Me Then, and the album opened strong with its lead in single, Jenny from the Block. A number of songs on the album were demoed by a singer named Natasha Ramos, whose voice sounds similar to JLo's, but she actually had real vocal ability. Jennifer would use her voice, and her vocals can be heard on most of the songs on that album. In 2004, Jennifer began working on her music for her forthcoming album, Rebirth. Her label mate, A. Marie, was also working on her own album and wrote and recorded a song titled One Thing. A. Marie struggled to put the song out because her and Jennifer's label, Columbia Records, rejected it. When Jennifer Lopez expressed her interest in using the song for her album, Amory and her producer, Rich Harrison, leaked it to the radio stations to get ahead. Columbia tried to have the radio stations remove the song in hopes that it would be given to J.Lo, but it was too late. One thing was already becoming a hit. Jennifer wanted Rich Harrison to create a song for her that was similar. That's how she ended up with the leftover song from Usher that didn't make his Confessions album, titled Ride, and Rich reworked the song for her. I like this right here, man. It's that joint right here, man. Usher was pissed and demanded royalty saying, I hate it and I better be getting some publishing rights. Another song on the album titled Ride or Die was written by Brandy for her 2004 album Aphrodisiac, but it never made the album. The track was given to Jennifer who, of course, kept Brandy's vocals. Jennifer is now judging people's vocals on American Idol, and we can go on and on about JLo's use of ghost singers, but let's be honest, she's not a good singer, so I can't blame her. Thank you for tuning in to Black Femininity TV. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, check out our adult coloring book on Amazon, and check out our website in the link below.